Welcome to our Pentecost Sunday service, as today we remember the birth of the church in the pouring out of the Spirit in Jerusalem, and our continuing dependence upon his presence and power. And so we ask today for a fresh filling of the Spirit. Though we're separated physically, we are one body together as a church and with the worldwide church. As Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, for we were all baptised by one Spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, we were all given the one spirit to drink. We'll begin our service with a Pentecost prayer in a moment. But first, a couple of notices. We continue to wait for news on the timeline of the gradual opening up of churches again, for private prayer and for small services of both funerals and weddings. Today, again, we're going to be moving around homes and Ben and Laura are going to lead us in worship. Brian is going to read our Bible reading. Then Tim, our vicar, will bring our sermon for us. And finally, James and some of our families have recorded prayers through this time of Thy Kingdom Come. Also today, do you remember our Coffee Time Zoom at 11.15? That link should have been sent to you today with the link for this video. And this is the final day of our 10 days of prayer for thy kingdom come. And uh, as I hope some of you have been remembering, uh, we are spending uh, a 24-hour period again in prayer as we started thy kingdom come. So do look to see if there are any slots left today and do be joining us in prayer. We have an opportunity to use our virtual prayer room, uh, which is a jam board. Again, you'll have had the link sent out to you in this week's email. That lets us share with one another, how God is leading us to pray. So let's pray together a Pentecost prayer. Do join in the response after each phrase of the prayer. Fill us with your spirit. Let's pray. As we wait in silence, fill us with your spirit. As we listen to your word, fill us with your spirit. As we worship you in majesty, fill us with your spirit. As we long for your refreshing, fill us with your spirit. As we long for your renewing, fill us with your spirit. As we long for your equipping, fill us with your spirit. As we long for your empowering, Fill us with your spirit. Amen. We're now going to go to Ben and Laura, who are going to lead us in a time of sung worship. Good morning, everyone. It's a privilege to join you this Pentecost Sunday. Um, what a special day to remember that the spirit is with us always and uh, always will be bringing us the presence and power of Jesus where we are at home at the moment. Um, we're really glad to be able to lead you in worship this morning. Uh, these songs reflect on the, the Spirit's presence with us, um, calling that for God to send his Spirit again uh, this Sunday so that we can be filled with his power and his presence and that we can see change in our nation. And isn't it amazing what, what God is already doing through this season? Um, so yeah, we, we hope that this will be a blessing to you. Uh, it's a blessing to us to be able to worship with you this morning. So as we start, I'm just going to pray. Lord, we thank you so much for the gift of your spirit with us. Thank you, Lord, that it doesn't matter where we are. You're always with us. And that you promise to be with us always by your spirit until the end of the age. And we thank you so much for the amazing things we've seen you do over this time. And we pray that you would continue the good work you've begun, that you would surprise us, that we would see many more added to our number today. We glorify you, we thank you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name.
There's nothing worth more That'll ever come close Nothing can compare You're our living home Your presence, Lord I've tasted and seen I've tasted and seen Of the sweetest of loves When my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. In spirit, you are welcome here. In Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory. God is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. There's nothing worth more. There's nothing worth more. That'll ever come close Nothing can compare You're our living home Your presence, Lord I've tasted and seen I've tasted and seen Of the sweetest of love when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone in your presence Lord Holy Spirit you are welcome here Holy Spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Let us become. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your good. Let us become. Let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness Lord In Holy Spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Mountains are still being moved. Your strongholds are still being loosed. Oh God, we believe 
Yes, we can see the wonders of stone, what you do. The bodies are still being raised. And the giants are still being slain. And God, we believe. Yes, we can see the wonders are still what you do. Bodies are still being raised. 
giants are still being slain. God, we believe, yes, we can see it, that wonders are still what you do.
we come to sing our final song together, we remember that scripture presents the spirit to us as a fountain of living water that fills us and that means we'll never be thirsty again. And so this Pentecost Sunday, we pray, Holy Spirit, fill us afresh to overflowing and that that would flow out to other people, that we could be a blessing to those around us even during this time. as we hear about the first Pentecost, as we hear about when your spirit first brought your church to life, Lord, we we pray that you would speak to us, that we would hear you speaking clearly, and that you would draw us ever closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Today's reading is from Acts chapter 2, starting at verse 1. When the day of Pentecost came, They were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. 
All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. This is the word of the Lord. Hello everyone, it is great to be able to speak to you today. Great to be able to unpack this passage from Acts chapter two on the day of Pentecost, looking at the gift of Pentecost. And I don't know if how many of you would say that you've had life changing moments. You know, those kind of moments that we have in life where you define everything as happening either before that moment or after that moment. For me, going to university was one of those moments and having to learn how to wash my own clothes. I know it's shameful to actually have to admit it, but who knew how difficult it was to wash your clothes and not shrink everything? Getting married was another one of those moments. I used to think I was a pretty unselfish person. And then I got married and I realized the truth. Having kids. I don't think there was anything that could have prepared me for the sheer horror of that many sleepless nights. And now I take sleep, not for granted, but take every spit that I possibly can because I appreciate it so much. All of these before and after moments, life changing moments when life changes forever. And of course, that's interesting for the season that we find ourselves in at the moment, because potentially we're living in the midst of one of those moments right now. Before COVID-19, everything was normal, but now the future is very unclear. We took many things for granted and we realize that we can't take them for granted now. Things have changed. And it's in a moment like this, when we recognize that our world is shaking, when people are fearful and anxious, when many are starting to seek God in a way that we haven't actually seen for quite a long time, that we need to ask the question, well, what kind of church do we need to be? And in answer to that question, I think that we need to go back to another, another one of those life-changing moments. We need to go back to Pentecost. And as we do so, I think that what we discover is that God's gift for the church, the church that was birthed on that first Pentecost day, is God's gift for us too, as his church in this season, in this time that we're living in at the moment. Now, of course, the gift of Pentecost is of course the gift of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter one, Jesus is there talking to his disciples. and He says, wait in Jerusalem, wait until you receive the gift that my father has promised because you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. You see the gift of the Holy Spirit comes as the fulfillment of the promise of the father. It's spoken of, this outpouring of the spirit is spoken of by the Old Testament prophets. And of course, the coming of the Holy Spirit is promised by Jesus himself. And it's all fulfilled at this outpouring that we find in Acts chapter two, the outpouring of the Spirit at that first Pentecost. So how then do we understand Pentecost? How do we understand this gift that was given? Well, the first thing I wanna to say today is that Pentecost is about God's timing. Pentecost is about God's timing. Now, of course, we all know that timing is important in life whether it's timing on a golf swing or timing to lifting lockdown restrictions, we all know that timing is vital in order to get it right. And Pentecost is all about God's timing. And when we think about it, when we think about what Pentecost is, we realize just how perfect God's timing was. Pentecost is of course often known as the festival or feast of weeks in scripture. It's celebrated 50 days after Passover and it was a festival it was a time to celebrate the first fruits of the harvest. But it was also a time when the people would gather together to renew their covenant with God. 
the covenant from that first Passover, remembering and celebrating the deliverance of Israel from slavery in Egypt. So imagine the scene. Acts 2 paints this amazing picture of Jerusalem teeming with thousands of pilgrims that travelled from all around the Roman Empire to be present for the festival and this celebration. And it's in this context, in God's perfect timing, that God pours out his spirit. At a time when people were celebrating the first fruits of the harvest, God comes by his Holy Spirit and he pours out the first fruits of the age of the Spirit. He anoints Peter with power and the first fruits of global mission are reaped as 3,000 new believers from around the world, from the whole of the Roman Empire, put their trust in Jesus. And just as God's timing was perfect at Passover, in Jesus we find the true fulfilment of those Passover events. So God's timing was perfect at Pentecost as the outpouring of the first fruits of the Spirit establishes the new covenant written on people's hearts, providing and giving us a deeper meaning to the Feast of Weeks. You see, God's timing is perfect. The disciples had to wait. The Old Testament prophets who foresaw what was going to happen had to wait. The Israelites themselves had to wait. But God's timing was perfect. And I can't help but think that for some of us, this Pentecost, we need to hear again that truth, that God's timing is still perfect today. Perhaps you're waiting for an answer to prayer. Perhaps you're waiting for God to do something in your life. Perhaps you're waiting for a job. Perhaps you're waiting for financial provision. Perhaps you're waiting for a baby, whatever it might be, healing, wholeness, restoration, provision, whatever it might be. We need to learn the lesson of Pentecost that we need to wait because God's timing is perfect. I was recently reading a book and in it was reported this this story. In 1924, Dallas Theological Seminary almost went bust. On the day it was due to foreclose at noon, Dr. Harry Ironside, the president, held a prayer meeting in his office. And that day he prayed a prayer that he had often prayed in that season. Lord, we know that the cattle on a thousand hills are thine. Please sell some of them and give us the money. As he prayed with the staff and and some of the faculty, a tall Texas oilman walked into the receptionist's office and there told the secretary this. He said, I've just sold two cartloads of cattle in Fort Worth. Been trying to make a business deal work and it just won't happen. And as a result, I've been compelled by God to give this money to the seminary. I don't know if you need it, but here's the check. The secretary, of course, burst into the room where Dr. Ironside and his faculty were praying and said to Dr. Ironside, Harry, God just sold the cattle. An amazing story, an amazing story of God's timing and God's perfect provision. And you see, what I've learned in my life and what I've experienced is that when I'm waiting for an answer to prayer, God often waits until the last minute. Why? To deepen our trust and our faith in him. So if you're waiting for God, stay strong, keep trusting, because the world needs a strong, faith-filled and trusting church at a time like this. The second thing I want to say this morning is that Pentecost is about God's filling. Now, if your life was represented by this glass, I wonder how full are you? Are you, say, for example, just a little bit, just a little bit full? Which, of course, is true for all of us, because, of course, no one can say that Jesus is Lord without the Holy Spirit in their lives. But perhaps you're a bit fuller. And that's, that's great. That's OK. It's good. But, of course, it's even better to be fuller still. But is that enough? Is it enough to only be full to that level? Well, I think that actually what God calls us to is God calls us to be so filled with the Holy Spirit that actually we're not just full but that we are full to overflowing, that we begin to overflow. Because as we overflow, we impact the lives of other people around us. And of course, that means getting out of this building. It means getting out of the building and into the world, overflowing into the world around us. And this is, of course, what happened to Jesus, his first disciples. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to overflow everywhere that they went. 
And as a result, they began to change the world. We see in Acts chapter 2, of course, Pentecost, Peter's empowered, anointed by the Spirit to preach, and 3,000 people become Christians. In Acts chapter 3, we see the story of the healing of the beggar at the table gate beautiful. They begin to overflow and impact the world around them, changing the world one life at a time. And this is a pattern that continues throughout the book of Acts. All of those things happened out here in this world around us and not in buildings like the one behind me. You see, God's plan for us is that we might be filled so that we begin to overflow. So that when people encounter us, they can't help but meet Jesus. And this happens out here with people in the world around us, engaged in the world and in the lives of the people around us, so that they meet Jesus. And it's not primarily centred on the building behind us. And that's an amazing lesson and an amazing truth for the season that we find ourselves in. The church may still be closed, but the church is still very much open because we are in the world and called to overflow into the world. And friends, I believe that this is the normal Christian life to be filled with the Holy Spirit so that we overflow by the power of the Holy Spirit, making a difference everywhere we go. I remember once I was outside of our church building in Bristol doing a bit of outreach and uh, just offering to pray with people who were outside the church building and walking past. And I remember stopping one guy and starting a conversation with him. And he said, yeah, he said, I know exactly who you are. You're one of the vicars at this church. And he said, you know, he said, I work from home and I have my office at the front of my house. And I live halfway up the street from you. He said, we've never met before, but I just wanted to let you know that every time you walk past my house, I feel this joy welling up inside me. He said, I don't understand it. He said, I can't possibly understand it. Can you help me to understand what that joy is? And I was able to tell him that actually it was the Holy Spirit at work in him, overflowing from me into his life. And it was an amazing opportunity to have a conversation with him about Jesus. So Pentecost is all about God's filling. But how can we step into this? How can we receive more of the Holy Spirit? Well, the first thing is, I think that we need to be rooted. In John 15, verse 5, we read this. Jesus says, I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. Friends, we were made to be fruitful, but the only way to be fruitful is to remain connected and rooted in Jesus. And the second thing is pretty obvious. We need to ask. In Luke chapter 11, verse 13, Jesus tells us this. How much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? And of course, this is not a once and for all experience. We see in Acts chapter 2 and Acts chapter 4, disciples being, the same disciples being filled twice by the Holy Spirit. This is not a once and for all experience. And each one of us needs to ask and to go on asking to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And the third thing is, we need to wait. Jesus told his first disciples to wait for power from on high. Wait for that filling of the Holy Spirit. And I think that God calls us too to wait on him for his power today. Why? Because I think that it reminds us that the power is his and not ours. Waiting is humbling. Waiting is an act of surrender. Waiting is an act of dependence. And God gives his power to those who are humble, who are surrendered, and who are dependent upon him. And if you'd like to do some waiting, we're going to have an opportunity to do that this evening. At 7.30, what we've called Encounter, it's going to be a short time, about 45 minutes of worship, of listening to the word, and then waiting on God for more of his Holy Spirit. And you'd be so welcome to join us. Details of the Zoom code were sent out in the church email and also with the email with this link this morning. But then the fourth thing that we need to do is we need to believe. We need to ask, we need to wait, but we also need to believe that God wants to give his power to me. And I think this is a massive issue that so many in our church today struggle with. We get so much right in the church, but we find it hard to believe that the same power that rose Jesus from the dead is at work in me and is at work through me as well. You see, God gives his power to those who have faith, to those who believe he's ready to give it to them, because those are the kind of people who will use the power once it's been given. Now, I want you to imagine that you check online, you check your bank online, and all of a sudden you realise there's been a deposit for a million pounds in your bank account. What would you do? 
would you spend it? Or would you just think, actually, this is a bit of a mistake. I'm going to hold back and make sure I don't spend any of it just in case somebody comes and says they want it back later on. I think actually that's a bit like us. Actually, God has given us this power, but actually we don't want to spend it. We're not sure that it's ours. And we're not ready to be able to say yes, to claim it, and to then be able to use it. You see, you don't really believe it. You don't really believe you've got it if you never try and use it. This was a lesson that I learnt again and again when I was involved with a ministry called Healing on the Streets up in Birmingham. As we went out on the streets, consciously trying to take the power of God out onto the streets in mission and evangelism to touch the lives of those who were hurting and broken in our community. And I remember well, very early on, as I was doing this ministry, a man walked up on crutches and took a seat. He was riddled with arthritis. He couldn't move his arms above this level and he couldn't move his legs without walking with, without these, these crutches. And I remember kind of as I was asked to pray for him, this question, do I really believe? Do I really believe that God has given me the power by his spirit to be able to, in partnership with his spirit, see healing in this man? And I stepped out in faith and I just said, in the name of Jesus, arthritis be gone. And then said to this man, well, would you, would you like to test what's happened? And this man slowly raised his arm and he raised it to the same level as before. And then he raised it a bit further and a bit further and a bit further. And then he raised his other arm to that same level. His, his shoulders had been totally healed. He then stood up and he stood up in, in the, in the, in the, on the, up from the chair in the high street and he began to move his legs. You can't really see me doing it. Let me just move a little bit higher up. And he started moving his legs like this. And then he started dancing like this in the high street. It was absolutely amazing to see God's power at work in this man's life. Do we really believe it? Do we really believe that the Holy Spirit would give us power to see God's kingdom come, to share in this work of mission? And then the fifth thing is we've got to receive. And we need to learn how to receive God's gift in the way that he wants to give it. And this means humbling ourselves. Are we willing to humble ourselves? Are we willing to want this so much, the gift that God has, wants to give to us, that we don't actually care how God gives it, even if it takes us time, even if it makes us look a bit silly, even if it costs us everything, are we willing to humble ourselves to receive the gift as God wants to give it? You see, all of these things, all of these five things require sacrifice, time or pride, surrendering everything to Jesus. And that's really important. Or the author Tommy Tenney wrote this, he said, fire doesn't fall on empty altars. There has to be a sacrifice on the altar for the fire to fall. If you want the fire of God, you must become the fuel of God. You see, friends, what I think he's saying is, is that if we want the fire of the Spirit, if we want more of God, then we must ourselves become a sacrifice. We must hold nothing back and we must offer everything to God, every part of our lives to him, holding nothing back. And when we offer ourselves as a sacrifice, as we offer ourselves as that sacrifice on that altar, that's when God's fire falls. That's when God can empower his church to do amazing things once again. The great Methodist revivalist John Wesley said this, I set myself on fire and people come to watch me burn. You see, spirit-filled men and women of God are profoundly attractive to the world. Spirit-filled men and women of God are profoundly attractive because they are the ones who impact the world. They are the ones who see transformation. And this reminds us, of course, and this is my third point, that Pentecost is about God's mission. Pentecost is about God's timing. Pentecost is about God's feeling. But Pentecost is about God's mission. You see, God wants each one of us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. He wants us to be on fire with his Holy Spirit burning for Jesus, anointed and equipped by his spirit, but not so that we just have a good time, not so that we get a spiritual boost ahead of the spiritual low of work on a Monday morning. You see, Pentecost is about God's mission, and we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit because we need God's power. We need his power to be effective witnesses. You see, being filled with God's Holy Spirit is God's plan for us. 
That's his purpose for us. Because this is God's way for us to fulfill his command and his commission, his mandate to us to make disciples who make disciples of every nation. One writer described the impact of being filled with the Holy Spirit in these words. The Spirit doesn't breed consumers, but missionaries. The Spirit doesn't bend to our will, but bends the church to his will. The Spirit doesn't promise us an easy ride and a comfortable life, but promises comfort, boldness and gifts for whatever lies ahead. The Spirit calls and equips us for service every day but he doesn't enlist us against our will. We have a choice. Every day we make a choice to join in with God's mission or not. What a challenge that is to us. Are we consumers or are we missionaries? Are we more concerned with our will or God's will? With our comfort or God's mission? And what do the answers to those questions really answer to the question, how filled with the Holy Spirit are we really? So what kind of the church does the world need us to be right now? Well, I think the church is, what the world needs is a church like the early church, a church that's empowered by the Spirit of God to bring transformation. So this Pentecost, let's pray and ask God to pour out his Spirit on us afresh, that he may renew his church and bring the revival that our nation so desperately needs. Let me leave you with just one final thought. And it's a quote from Smith Wigglesworth. God never intended his people to be ordinary or commonplace. His intentions were that they should be on fire for him, conscious of his divine power, realising the glory of the cross and that foreshadows the crown. Friends, you and I weren't made to be ordinary or commonplace. We were made to stand out, to shine like stars in this, our generation. And the way that we do that is, as Smith Wigglesworth says, God's intention is that we should be on fire for him, living and working for him in the power and the anointing of the spirit that he provides so that we might be his witnesses. So may God bless you this Pentecost Sunday and let me pray. Father God, thank you so much that Pentecost shows us and teaches us about your timing, that your timing is perfect. And I pray and ask, Father, for all of those who are struggling at the moment, who are waiting, who are crying out to you for answers to the prayer. Father, may you help us to trust you. May you help us to stay strong and faithful. And may you help us to persevere until we see you come through and hear you answer our prayers. Father, I pray for each one of us today that you would come by your spirit and you would fill each one of us afresh, even in this moment, Lord, As we wait on you, come Holy Spirit, I pray, and equip us and anoint us, Lord, so that we may be your missionaries. Lord, may we not be consumers. May we not be consumers of church or or anything else, but may we truly understand that we're called to be missionaries in this world. Lord, challenge each one of us, provoke us, I pray. Lord, where we're comfortable, get us out of our comfort zone and call us out on mission into this world. But first, Lord, fill us with your spirit because we need your power to be your witnesses. We ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. James 1, 5. If any of you need wisdom, ask God for it. Do you know what? That is absolutely right. Let's pray. Dear God, I pray for the virus to go away quickly so we can see our family and friends again. Amen. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous running into it and they are safe. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Dear God, we pray for those who are ill with coronavirus or other sicknesses. We pray that you will protect the NHS and other key workers. Thank you for technology like Zoom and FaceTime. Please keep us safe and end lockdown soon. In the beginning, there were no people, no animals, 
no white, nothing. Then God said, Let there be white, and there was white day and night. Dear God, we love you lots of lots, and what you've done is so good for us. And, and when you do the rain, it's a bit not good, but we love it when it's rained, because that helps us water the plants. And, the, and everything we have. I like Noah's Ark and um, the rainbow because um, cause we're, now we're putting up rainbows in our windows because it's a sign of promise and God will never forget us. I take my life down at your feet You'll be only one I need I turn to you and you are John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Anyone who belongs to Christ is a new person, and the past is forgotten and everything is new. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 Dear God, we pray that, pe that more people get to know Jesus. Amen. He is good. He is good. His love, His love endures this forever. Forever. Amen. 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 You do it. Say Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us. I hope you've been really encouraged and met with God this morning. And thank you too to all who helped prepare and put together our service. We look forward to meeting up with you again soon. We have, as a church, our monthly prayer meeting tomorrow by Zoom. That's Monday the 1st of June at 8pm. Do join us for that if you can. And also, of course, for those who are able, I'll see you shortly for our coffee time by Zoom. 11.15 a.m. this Sunday morning. Let me close with the words of a Pentecost blessing. May the spirit of truth lead you into all truth, give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, and strengthen you to proclaim the word and works of God, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you, and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.